Our speaker today is uh, Dr. Don Knuth. He is uh, Fletcher Jones Professor of Computer Science at Stanford University. He received the doctorate degree from the California Institute of Technology and remained um, on the mathematics faculty of that school uh, before joining Stanford as a professor in, in the computer science department in 1968. Uh, professor Knuth has uh, pursued a distinguished and quite prolific career in uh, mathematics and computer science. He is the author of a well-known series of volumes on uh, the art of computer programming, and he wrote a five-volume set of books entitled Computers and Typesetting. Uh, he received the Turing Award from the Association for Computing Machinery in 1974. Uh, he received the National Medal of Science from President Carter in 1979. And uh, earlier this year, he received the Franklin Medal. In addition to all these activities, uh, he's an accomplished pianist and an organist. Uh, today, he'll be discussing some quite significant efforts um, in um, uh, computers and typesetting, uh, which have been carried out under his direction at Stanford over the last uh, eight or ten years. Uh, the question this morning is, can computers help to produce beautiful books? And I think that uh, we'll hear uh, this presentation and we'll agree with him that uh, they certainly can. It's a pleasure to introduce to you uh, Don Knuth. <laughs> Hi. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, learn the technology here of, of getting my slides to show. This is a talk that I that I um, expected I would only give once in my life. I, I prepared it uh, for the Stanford Library Associates, the uh, the group of people who um, uh, who help who help Stanford libraries uh, and who who also like me love books um, and. Uh, uh, so the question in the title was uh, because a lot of the people in there, in, in that uh, group, uh, um, uh, think of this as a th uh, think think of computers as a threat to the to, to the ordinary ways of producing beautiful books. See, um, uh, how do I get my first slide? Okay, uh, I don't see anything now. So um, there it is. Okay. So um, uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, so the group of people. Um, I guess it's not it, it's not exactly the same as the audience here today, but I think there's enough in common that you'll be that you, that you'll that you'll sh share uh, the um, uh, the ideas. And uh, although uh, although uh, for them, I don't think the the answer to the question was obviously yes at the beginning. Um, during the, as Mark said, during the past 10 years, I've been working on research project with uh, computers and typesetting at Stanford, and um, there and uh, this has uh, resulted in two systems that are that I'm going to uh, give you an overview of today and and show you some of the things from the archives of the project, um, some of the errors that we made as well as some of the uh, things that worked well. Now. <coughs> um, the the first system is called Tech, and uh, uh, it's based on and it's a system for typesetting and and uh, the the uh, uh, the main interesting thing in retrospect about it is that it it has a, a, a underlying structure that seems to be uh, that seems to be um, quite powerful in building uh, b building high level applications of, of typesetting. A very simple structure um, at, at the basis, but uh, we found that as we uh, as we organized our computer programs around this, we were able to do in about uh, one fifth of the space for the ordinary programs. We were able to do the things that the other programs were doing in in, in fairly easy and unified ways. So the, um, the idea is that we compose a page um, by building two kinds of lists. There's a horizontal list and a vertical list, and each list is made up of out of boxes. And um, uh, so a box is either a, uh, a, a single character or, or it's a, a black box, a solid black rectangle. And um, we could also use uh, graphics in a box as well. 
and then we, uh, but so we have the atomic boxes, and then we make molecules out of the boxes by putting them into a horizontal list or a vertical list. Then the um, uh, be between the boxes, there's something that uh, unfortunately got the name of glue. It's more like a spring, really, but this determines spacing between boxes, and each. Uh, 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 there doesn't have to be space between boxes, and there can be two spaces in a row instead of two, instead of box, space, box. But the uh, the main idea is that these lists contain not only boxes, but al but also uh, indication of spacing. And the spacing has three parts to it. Uh, one part is the is the normal or default spacing, and then there's uh, a proportionality uh, amounts by which we would like to stretch if we want to uh, if we want the box the list to become wider or we can shrink if we want to, to make the thing tighter. And um, if it, uh, and, and uh, the amount of proportionality for stretching isn't necessarily the amount that you would use when, when, when you're shrinking. So there are, uh, so each, uh, each aspect of this, of this spacing has, uh, um, has its normal amount and then its uh, proportionality for stretching, proportionality for shrinking. Uh, now we can't. Let's see. I can't see too well here, but um, I guess you can see better than I can from my from my perspective. Um, the other um, the other uh, innovation that went into tech, as far as typesetting is concerned, is uh, is that um, we decided to um, uh, to uh, uh, well, we have an idea that that's worked well for breaking the paragraphs into lines. Uh, it's something that actually uh, we first discussed. Uh, we were trying to do do music, and we, and uh, a music professor at Stanford came to me and and said he wanted to find a good, the best way to break uh, pieces into bars and so on, and so, so that he could typesetting music. And I showed this to my students, and when we came up with a solution to that, one of the students said, "Well, you could use this for paragraphs of text as well." And um, and what we what we realize is that uh, um, since the computer is doing the typesetting, it has the whole paragraph in uh, in its memory. It doesn't have to wait and see what's coming up in advance as it is when someone is uh, is doing this um, uh, uh, directly uh, with a with an operator uh, where an operator has to is justifying lines as it goes. So we so the computer has the entire paragraph and and there's a way to then. Um, uh, uh, look ahead so that the, the, the problems that are occurring later on in the paragraph can affect the way the, the, the first line of the paragraph is broken. Now, this is one of the slides from an early experiment that we made, and we, we have a, a, a small number here in the right margin. This says 0 .780, saying that this line is stretched about 78% of its capacity for stretching, and this one is 30%. And I don't. Here's a negative one, which went down 25% of uh, for, for shrinking and so on. For, well, for each. Uh, Amount of stretching and shrinking, we can compute a, a number that says how bad it is, how how bad that line is, and we get demerits uh, for the for the um, uh, a score for for a line as to how as to how much we had to go uh, uh, out of line. And the and the way that tech uh, breaks lines into paragraphs can be understood in this kind of a diagram. Um, uh, that paragraph that I had before. If you, st you start at the beginning of the paragraph, and then th there were two reasonable places to, to break after the first line, after the word A or after the word King. We go back, if you can look, look back at the, uh, uh, in olden times when wishing still helped one, there lived a King. We could, e we could either end it here after the, after the, that word A or after King, or, or, or the word King would, would also, um, fit in. Now, uh, at, uh, Ending after A has 2,357 demerits. Ending after King has 1,734 demerits. Um, now, after you've broken the first line, uh, then you have two choices as to where to break the second line in that one. Or after King, there's only one reasonable choice to, to break the second line, where you'll be paying 4,600 demerits after that one. And so you can think of this as sort of a road map. As to, and, and the idea is to try to find the shortest the shortest distance from the beginning of the paragraph down to the end of the paragraph here. And each of these uh, numbers here says how many demerits you have to pay. And the shortest path through this maze is going to be the one that, that, that produces the paragraph that has the best, uh, 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 the fewest total demerits, so that it'll have the best visual appearance. And this is something that computers can easily do. It's something that, you know people aren't that good at, but it's something a computer could do quite, quite efficiently. And so we were able to produce uh, um, uh, automatically uh, uh, b better line breaks in paragraphs, and we did quite a few experiments on how 
this would improve uh, like we we tried some pages of Time magazine and so on and show that that it would come out a lot better if they use if they use this kind of a method and it works quite fast so you can also do uh, do, do fun things with it uh, and set to different shapes and so on um, now as I first gave this talk I was also making a plug for Stanford archives the um, Stanford University archives is a it has a, a lot of collection of uh, of uh, manus you know manuscript materials from great writers and so on but they also are collecting now a lot of the archives of of, uh, of uh, uh, people in Silicon Valley uh, as uh, it's so that the the technological history of this era is uh, will be available and so um, uh, uh, since we did our work in the university and it's all it's all in the public domain uh, we also wanted to uh, to make available the things that we learned while we're doing this project, and so the so uh, a lot of the materials, the, the not all the junk, but the good stuff, I think, were deposited in, in the uh, university archives, so that people who are want to want to uh, to see the development uh, and and what what things went on in this project will be able to find it. Um, the very first the very first thing we ever printed with tech was a was uh, something that we put out as a keeps uh, something for our friends at Christmas time I think it was uh, 1978 um, a little uh, a little story about the um, about um, my wife's grandmother it was written by her co my wife's cousin um, and and uh, we we had a very primitive uh, Xerox graphics printer and uh, the very first uh, attempts at at uh, our, our computer-generated fonts uh, were were done in December that year, and and a man uh, named Homer Weathers, uh, with a little offset press in Columbus, Ohio, printed this this uh, this first publication that that came out. My wife uh, made linoleum block cuts uh, to go with it, and uh, so this is the but this was the first time we were typesetting with with the very first prototype of uh, of of tech. So um, I don't know. We printed about 60 copies of this. One of those is in the archives. So yeah, you call it in Canabula. Um Then uh, <clears throat> uh, I originally worked on tech, not really for. Uh, I wasn't thinking of anyone using it except myself and my secretary when I started. Uh, I I um, w wanted a system by which I could I could write my books on computer science and and that uh, she would. It would help me, but other people seem to indicate they would be interested in using it too. And so finally, uh, um, and it turned out that the computer was was down a lot that year. Uh, I had nothing else to do but sit down and write a manual for how to use the system, and that turned out to be a good thing. Whenever you do a system about uh, about uh, uh, about typesetting, I guess the uh, the, the, the important thing is that it should be able to dis uh, you should be able to write a manual for that system in the system itself and and uh, this means that you have to be able to break the rules you you, do, you develop a system that's or, that's that's intended for one application but then if you if you have it for for the application of describing itself then all of a sudden you, you find out that uh, that that there were gaps in your language because it wasn't able to, it w in order to describe yourself you have to be able to uh, uh, to say, well, the thing that normally means uh, the computer takes control doesn't anymore mean the computer takes control, so that you can so that you can um, uh, sh show your source files as they are typed instead of as they as as they're supposed to be interpreted. Well, the, so we came out with a with a preliminary manual um, in the summer of '78, I think it was, and uh, this. This manual now is pretty rare, I guess, but they've made about 600, 600 copies or something like that. The American Math Society got interested in this because they found that that tech uh, was able to do the um, all of the different kinds of printing that that was uh, that were stymieing them at the time. Instead of just uh, instead of having, they had to go to four different suppliers to handle the four different kinds of documents that they were doing. And uh, but but tech could could, uh, could do it all with one system. Also. Uh, Walt Disney came out with a movie about uh, a few years later. Uh, uh, movie, movie text. Well, we, the the first system of tech we called Tech 78. Um, the um, 
but the next one was Tech 82, and this is, uh, I took this picture mostly because you can see Highway 82 here. This is El Camino Real in uh, California, and it happened to be, we had Tech and 82 both in the same slide. And now, th th besides Tech, there's another system for, uh, uh, as I, I'm saying Tech is for typesetting, but there's a, the other system is called Metafont, and this is for the design of, of typefaces. And in order to give you some idea as to what Metafont is like, I want to, uh, I don't have a terminal here to, uh, uh, to display it for you, so I'll make it, I'll just show you a demo that, uh, or, or something that it would have looked like. Let's see, what is the date on this? October 10th, Thursday. Doesn't have the year. I think this was probably 79 or 80. Uh, but, uh, uh, if you're, but, uh, it's a way of drawing, of, of drawing the typeface, uh, uh, you, you describe to the computer not the outline of the letter, but the, pro, the, the principles by which the letter is constructed. And so here, here's, we're going to make a uh, capital A. And, and the first instruction in the program is take your thick pen and draw a, and draw a line, uh, a certain diagonal. Then take a thinner pen, make a crossbar. Then take an eraser and erase down off to the, uh, the part that you didn't want on the top. But going, going back, you see we had this thick line up there, but I'm going to erase part of that. And then we go and uh, draw with a thin pen um, uh, with a similar diagonal to the bottom. And, um, and we add a serif, and we add some more serifs, and then we have a letter A. Now, the, this is all done by a, by a computer program. Inside of the pro program, it has points, like point 0.5 and point 0.6. These points are not necessarily at the edge of the letters, but in the, but in the spine of the letters. And, the, uh, and there's a little program that goes with it saying how to position points five and six depending on the, the parameters of the, uh, of the front, depending on uh, how, the, uh, uh, how thick the, thin, the thick lines are, how thin the thin lines are. And, uh, and so the same program that drew this A would also draw many, many other uh, A's if you, if you said that you wanted a different style of font, a different, different proportions, different kinds of, of weights. Um, now, the, I, I went through and uh, and uh, designed uh, with this with this kind of a, a it was a strange programming language because I'm writing a program for each I write a program for A and a program for B and a program for C and so on uh, and I got through the alphabet and had what I thought was a reasonably good alphabet except the, except for uh, for one letter and the letter S. Uh, uh, turned out to be much harder than the other ones, uh, and I couldn't. And I and for for um, two days and nights, I didn't have any sleep, and I and uh, I couldn't figure out how to how to, uh, you know I had 25 letters, and I and uh, and uh, but I couldn't get the S to look right at all with the system that I've been using for the other ones. I took it home to my wife, and I showed her what I uh, the the best uh, attempts I had at it, and she says, "Why don't you make it S shaped?" And, uh, and I, what is that shape? And, and, uh, and so I found that uh, in, in, um, uh, in uh, 15th century, Palatino had drawn these, these letters, and so other people had shown how to construct a letter S, but they don't look like a modern S particularly. Louis XIV uh, com commissioned uh, uh, a, uh, uh, for, for 10 years, they had some scientists working on how to, how to do letters, and if you, if you study this, uh, uh, and look at the geometric construction by which they, they did the S, you find that they actually cheated. The, the lines that, that they draw here don't, don't correspond to the geometrical construction, but they, but they, they fudged it at the, at, at the end. Um, so, but finally, the third day, I, I, I uh, figured out uh, uh, how to write a program that would do, that would do uh, the letter S, uh, uh, and it turned out to be an interesting mathematical problem. Um, it saved me. I, at, at one point, I was thinking maybe I'd have to... Uh, you write all my books so I could avoid using the letter S. Uh, I had to leave Stanford. Um, uh, but uh, but this this uh, slide illustrates that the that the this idea of parameters that is uh, um, uh, all of these S's have a, are a little different as far as the slope of the of the slanted part. The, the, the tricky part in the letter was to figure out how to adjust to a slope, and so the designer can choose. Uh, uh, can choose which of these slopes it will do, and then the then the uh, the rest of the program is supposed to adapt itself to the uh, to the specifications. And this is the this is the principle of the of the design of Metafont that you that you uh, uh, 
uh, are able to, to, to describe with your program um, a, a large set of letters from which you can then choose later on uh, the one that the one that uh, uh, that blends best. But you can you can um, make such such changes very easily. The hardest part, putting the original specifications down, is harder than just drawing one letter. But once you but it's something like word processing. Then uh, once you've got the uh, first draft in, then you can easily make uh, uh, changes and uh, and uh, so, so you try to build in uh, a a letter that um, is more than instead of one letter you try to build a describe a family of letters as if you were being asked to to draw um, many different uh, alphabets uh, in different occasions instead of one specific alphabet that's why we call it metaphon uh, now uh, this slide I, I I showed you because it was uh, it, it well it was it's something that made me happy at the time. Um, uh, this this slide was was produced by a um, uh, Alpha Type CRS uh, typesetter directly onto the film. This particular slide is uh, is the same is, is the film that I that I had in the machine. And it was the first time I was able to hook hook my uh, Metaphon system up to. Uh, a, a, a commercial typesetter and get and get real type out. Before that, we'd been using a very low resolution Xerox uh, type of machines, and here we were able to go directly on the film. And this was the this is a it's kind of a funny looking typeface to me now, but at the time I was uh, it, uh, it was the first time I had ever seen anything with uh, with really high resolution coming out of the out of the system, and so I was I was glad to be able to um, uh, to make this slide in '79. When I did. Now this. This is an example of the um, the changing of parameters. As I said, each letter is drawn by a computer program, but the computer program doesn't just doesn't draw just one letter. It'll draw it'll draw infinitely many letters depending on the specification. So in this case, I I made an example where I started with a, by setting the parameters for for a rather um, uh, old-fashioned typeface, and I end and I have another setting of parameters that's that's sort of hyper modern, and in the um, and in between, uh, we keep changing. So there are 670 letters or something on this page. Each one is in a different typeface, uh, but each one is getting one 670th of the way from the from the beginning to the uh, to the end. And uh, uh, so so generated each letter this way. Uh, but uh, uh, that's the, to, in order to illustrate the idea of of parameters. And I wrote a, a paper about this where the first the first half of the paper was written in this typeface, and the last half of the paper was written in this typeface. And this example appears in the middle of the paper. So. Some people have said that I should have chosen a translation of the psalm that also got more modern in its language as we as the uh, uh, as we went on. Uh, I did some other experiments where um, that uh, really ought to be ought to be pursued further because uh, we didn't have time to to uh, to carry it out, but. Uh, but I added randomness into the design. See, I have this—I uh, I have a program that'll say how to draw a letter M, um, and uh, part of the program says here's where to put point one, here's where to put point two. Now, if you add to this program saying, but actually add a little random noise, go a little bit away from the from the point that they, that that, that uh, the mathematics would would predict, uh, uh, then uh, it turned out that. Um, uh, the the typeface got a, got a bit livelier and more interesting, and um, musicians have noticed this when they when they have computer generated music. If you if you if you um, do music that goes strict one two three four one two three four, it's not a, it's not interesting to listen to at all. But if it's just a little bit anticipating or, or behind the beat, then you get excitement in the music and you get life. And and uh, I I really have the feeling that the that the reason that we uh, that a lot of the uh, uh, old books that we see um, seem so beautiful to us is because the technology was not that good, and there were there were these uh, minor minor changes that had that that uh, that made the thing look more uh, exciting to our to our uh, visual systems. The way the way we actually perceive uh, uh, perceive beauty is that uh, if every, if something is too perfect, it's not it's it's kind of it's kind of boring. Um, so here I anyway I started out and I, I and this was one of my first fonts but I, I um, uh, this one has zero standard deviation and this has one unit of standard deviation this has two units and three and four and five um, and uh, pretty soon it gets ridiculous uh, 
when I, I don't know, did I carry this out any further? Do I have another? No, I don't. Um, uh, so when I, when I got the standard deviation of much past this, people said it looked like people writing checks in the Berkeley co-op at midnight. Uh, but the, uh, but I, but, but when you have about two units, uh, 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 then it turned out that the, uh, that the, um, effect was, was extremely, uh, extremely warm that you could, that you felt that the, uh, that this was not a, uh, typeface designed by a mathematician or, uh, uh, with fixed things. And so I really think that, uh, there's, uh, th there's some, some, uh, um, uh, a lot of room for, for experiments along these lines, trying to put a little bit of, of uh, imperfection into, into modern technology in order to make our products look better. Um, now, the, uh, the system was also used successfully by, by uh, people who came from the Shanghai Printing Company to Stanford, and, uh, and we had some, um, uh, see, this doesn't show the, this doesn't show um, the same character, but we have a, but, but, uh, uh, in some of the experiments, we were able to write programs for Chinese characters, so that the same program that would do one style, uh, the uh, I don't know, sum style, and the bold style, would uh, just by just by changing the specifications. But otherwise, the the, pro, the, the uh, you, you have to change 19 subroutines that draw the basic strokes. Um, what, uh, but you substitute another 19 subroutines, and you and you change from one style to the other. Uh, but you, but the, uh, but you still can write thousands of programs for the individual Chinese characters that uh, uh, that retain the uh, that, that don't have to be changed, uh, uh, and so then you can imagine uh, uh, any any um, you know many many different styles of of type available then from from one design. Uh, we have uh, this is the the way the Chinese characters are constructed internally. Uh, instead of instead of drawing with black, we we just uh, took out that part that filled in here, to, so you can see how um, how these uh, characters are built up. Uh, see, this one is much harder to read. This was um, we had a visitor from India who made fonts in uh, for for Sanskrit for, for Devanagari. What's this one? Okay, this is a uh, example of his of his program for one of the one of the letters in uh, in Indian script. Uh, okay, now let's see. What have I got here? This is uh, this is a Tamil font done by another man who came to visit us for for a few weeks in the summertime, and uh, and uh, he he um, uh, was able to go back home with this, and I believe he started a company now to, so that he can do typesetting in uh, in India in uh, these things. So as I mentioned, a lot of these things are. Available in the Stanford archives to be the the uh, working documents that these people have for anyone want to pursue it. And uh, among the things that I that um, uh, that that I think are most interesting in there are the are the uh, uh, the proofs that were made as as uh, we're working through trying to make new typefaces with these uh, uh, with the system. So there are many packages of. Uh, uh, where each page has another has another attempt at at um, uh, get, um, at letters of the alphabet, and uh, uh, so over a period of over a period of years, uh, we we kept um, uh, ex making experiments. These are eight and a half by eleven sheets, uh, and the kind of proofs that we would get, and then we could put it on the wall, and we could try to do various experiments at different uh, different scale. Um, I was quite fortunate that I had the advice of, the, of uh, many of the best type designers in the world on this project. They, uh, since uh, since I'm just a, 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 a amateur and scientist and so on, they and they could see that this was something that where they that their expertise could be used to teach a computer how to do do something. So I got, uh, for example, I got Herman Zopf's comments on on the uh, design, and these are some of his these are some of the things like you know a too dark. Here's the uh, uh, compare this part with uh, monotype. You know, I had the A all wrong, and um, <clears throat> uh, so here are some more of, of Zop's comments on the. Uh, I guess that was the detail of the previous one. Uh, here's where Herman uh, 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 came out and to work with me, and the worst letter 
was the was the lowercase g, and so the red markings on here are his drawings as to where the line should go, and uh, uh, and then we have before and after pictures in the archives where we're able to uh, change the program. Um, this this is um, sorry it's so dark. Um, Matthew Carter took a look at the uh, letter A and made important you know and and really said that I got to do that quite differently than I than I did before. Uh, we can't see that too well, unfortunately. So I have comments from uh, also from Chuck Bigelow and Chris Holmes who. Who, who, who took a look at my my letter A and gave, gave their recipe for it and and, and uh, there are, there are hundreds of these uh, sheets of, of showing the criticism of the early attempts that I had with the fonts and uh, and suggestions and it's and it's uh, quite interesting that uh, to see that in in most cases the uh, uh, these independent critics uh, had exactly the same uh, suggestions to make, but in some cases they were completely the opposite. One would say go this way, the other would say go the other way. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. The, uh, as I mentioned, I gave this talk first to the associate to the Stanford Libraries, and uh, and in 1981 was the first time w we were able to uh, uh, to do something that I could show a slide from the archives that re re related to them. I had typeset it. I, I was able to typeset this uh, this program announcement. Uh, for one of their one of their programs, just so it's an example of when I was getting being able to set something that uh, that looked enough like type that I could show it to a library group. At Christmas time, uh, we gave out this recipe. What is it? 1984. We gave out this recipe for one of their Christmas parties for uh, for Stalin to make. And so uh, uh, again, uh, during the years, we were eventually able to. Uh, uh, to to make something that looked uh, respectable. This is dated 1985. This typeface was was designed by my daughter for her uh, high school graduation uh, using the using the program that I had. All she all she had to do was was find a combination of the parameters that uh, that would make the uh, that would make the right size. So so she. So she decided she would like to have letters that approximately this proportion, and she and she worked it out so that it would come out the same width as the letters for Stanford Memorial Church and so on. Uh, so by taking the uh, by taking a meta font, a font that uh, is designed to to adapt itself to the uh, um, uh, by 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 choosing the, the numbers, um, uh, uh, this was she also had another one for the commencement program, which uh, where the word Commencement came out to be just the right width and so on for that. Um, oh, that by the way, that was the first appearance of the final uh, the, f the face that we call computer modern. This was the first uh, appearance of of computer modern uh, in its final version uh, uh, was was when she graduated from high school. That I guess that's why I closed that slide. This is an example of one of the first experiments uh, I made with Herman Zopf. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was it was good luck. This uh, the number six is, is is the most difficult numeral to do, and and the first thing he wanted to see when I was showing him Metafont was uh, to do a six, and so he dashed off a six on a on a piece of paper, and and uh, I keyboarded the the codes in that would that would draw that thing, and uh, and it came out, and and uh, and by great good fortune uh, he said oh that's a wonderful six I could, I've never been able to do such a good six and so and so uh, we we hit it off uh, uh, rather well then then uh, um, the American Math Society commissioned um, a, a typeface uh, from from Zop called uh, Euler AMS Euler named after a famous mathematician and um, one of the things we we were doing then was trying to uh, uh, to use the to, to use these designs that he made and uh, and uh, study the process of uh, of adapting Metafont to this. Metafont is more intended for a designer working directly with Metafont instead of instead of with the the older style of drawing outlines and then matching outlines. But it does it does handle the uh, uh, the outlines as well. So these are. Examples from the uh, from the Euler book. Now the the uh, uh, just last week I finished writing a, a math book where we've uh, 
where we've used the Euler typeface for the first time, and uh, the, the book has a lot of different kinds of mathematics in it. So, the, so uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good test of. This is a, a page from the from that book, uh, from one of the first uh, uh, trial proofs of, the, of that book, uh, where we're using um, Hermann's Euler font but for these numerals, for example, in the letter N. Um, and the letter K here. For these would be uh, examples of his of his characters, and then I have a, a version of Computer Modern for the uh, uh, for the text that goes with. <coughs> um, the the system tech is is in the public domain, as I mentioned, and uh, it's and uh, this has meant that. Uh, Hundreds of people came up and, and volunteered their services to to help get the to help get the bugs out of it, and now uh, it's spread around the world. And I uh, uh, have no idea how many users there are, but it's uh, it must be in the hundreds of thousands. The uh, uh, it's it's now running on essentially every computer uh, that except the very smallest computers, more than 100 different computers. Uh, uh, running tech and it's designed to be extremely machine independent so that they'll get identical results no matter which computer they use uh, and it's used in many parts of the world and here's a, in, um, uh, the, one of the principles of its design was that it should be able to handle foreign languages uh, it shouldn't be only English uh, chauvinistic and uh, uh, one of the surprises to us was that the, the hyphenation algorithm that we developed for uh, for use in English actually worked even better for French and uh, this uh, uh, Professor Desermanian uh, believes that in fact uh, the uh, using text hyphenation algorithm he's able to do a hundred percent correct hyphenation he, he not only in French he, he not only uh, never inserts a bad hyphen he never misses a place to hi to insert a, a valid hyphen if there is one so that uh, uh, and, and not only that but he needed only about one fourth of the space that we needed for English uh, to get 80 percent to 89 percent hyphenation, something like that. Uh, uh, he's able to get 100 percent with it in French. Um, here's an, here's a brochure from uh, uh, the Sturz uh, University Press in Germany that that that's uh, one of the uh, one of the largest uh, suppliers of mathematical typesetting. Um, Here's uh, an example of the uh, second European conference on tech that was that was held. There's a lot of the, of, of people uh, doing research on different ways of making preprocessors so that they can use they can use tech uh, as a um, vehicle. I guess I should mention why I'm calling it tech instead of text. Uh, we think of this as Greek letters, tau, epsilon, and chi, because uh, this is the Greek word that means both art and technology uh, that, led, that led to the, the two things and we, we're trying to, to blend uh, uh, the aesthetics with the idea of doing good technical work. Um, <clears throat> here's something that I got recently from Mexico City where someone had done a calendar with um, uh, and they, this, uh, they made up their own typeface uh, for um, for this, I, they didn't do the as the Mayan characters in in Metafont, though I don't think. Here's a, and then I have a letter from Japan. It's a, uh, they did their letterhead with Metafont, and um, and there's uh, uh, some beautiful work coming out of Japan with the, with Japanese version with called JTEC, and and uh, here's an example of something that. Uh, that he sent me. I, I can't read it, but uh, looks looks pretty good as far as the typesetting is concerned. And he's using Metafont in order to uh, uh, in order to design Japanese characters. Uh, this is uh, I think it was something like this was two or three years ago, and it was the it was what they called the the, the third Japanese tech user group uh, meeting or something like that. Um, <clears throat> one of the one of the most uh, uh, interesting things uh, visually is still hasn't been published and we plan to publish it later this year uh, is some work that I, I invited a designer to uh, uh, to our project and she ha did some 
experiments that were a lot of fun with with Metafon, uh, where she would she she would vary two aspects of a design, for example, on a page. Uh, so here you can see the the different ovals are made with the different contrast between thick and thin and, and uh, amounts of and, and amounts of uh, of thinning going on. She experiments with uh, different ways of drawing of of making the the serif set and, and the I um, uh, can't remember the technical word for this at the base of uh, base of strokes. Um, so her idea is to to treat to treat a, a system like Metafont as a new medium for artists. Uh, where they want, and they'll learn how to control that medium as they learn how to control uh, a brush or a or a um, chisel or, or other other ways of drawing letters, pens. Um, and so, uh, one way to do it is to uh, is to just play with the, the design and get a feeling for what what comes out when you give the computer its head. Instead of instead of starting out with something that where you where you draw it out the way uh, where you're in in 100% control. And then you, and then you say, now computer, copy this. Instead, you consider the computer as part of the as part of the team with you, and uh, and uh, you you learn how how to uh, uh, to have the computer uh, have its head a little bit uh, as it's as as you're doing the drawing. But you learn how to to be implicitly in control instead of explicitly in control. Uh, and so she ex experiments with different ways of, of of doing the finishing strokes on characters and. The uh, arms, there, variety of different. See, each of these is uh, each of these ends is a little bit different. It's just the, um, ideas as to how deeply it's going to be cut at this point, and uh, and other details about the art. Um, so then, uh, uh, she, then uh, she has uh, used this to design a, a typeface, which was going to be released later on uh, called let's see it's called Pandora and uh, this was a uh, preliminary example where she sent uh, a nice a nice little booklet of, uh, of uh, an example of the of her first uh, her first example of Pandora it was a nicely uh, nicely presented with a hand bind this uh, hand bound with uh, nice threads and so on there <coughs> now um, I, I um, decided that uh, that uh, if this project was going to be a, a, a success, it, it had to be well documented, and I should be able to explain to other people what we learned in this in this work. Um, so I was going to write a book that would explain it all. Well, it turned out that finally uh, five books was was the uh, was what, what what finally has. And so we have now five volumes. Uh, a, B, C, D, and E, uh, which is the, which is a really a complete description of what we did in our in our project. Uh, Mark asked me before my talk is, do I have a uh, do, do I have the short 10-page version that describes uh, essentially what I'm saying today um, in a few words? And I, and the answer I guess is no. I, I I didn't have time to write a short book. I only could do this five lines here. But this but these uh, but these books tell tell really what uh, what we learned about about uh, the mixture of computers and typesetting in in our in our work and um, uh, they uh, you don't have to read them all but they, they make nice coffee table books and so on and uh, and there's also interesting quotations uh, uh, about printing in there that you can that you can enjoy but there's one by a man named R.R. Donnelly in fact from 1890s uh, in in the first in volume A there now the first volume is about Whoops! What happened? I lost the. So, I'm sorry, we just went dead. I can't go back either. Uh oh. All right. Well, um, I want to explain what's what's in those books. Um, uh, the. Uh, But it's easier to explain if I have visuals. So, is, are there any questions that I can answer? Meanwhile, yes. 
the, um, uh, the they aren't being used for the des very very much right now for the design of type. Uh, it's uh, uh, that's that, that I think is coming after meaning after after we publish this book. Uh, um, the the uh, the people who are using it to design things now are they're they're, they're more designing logos and ornaments right now than uh, uh, than type. Uh, uh, I think that's in fact um, I, I would say the the two systems tech and metafont tech is is something where 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 we know it's uh, it's uh, it's a successful way to way to go about doing typesetting. Metafont is completely off the wall experimental. It might turn out that it was that it was right. It might turn out that it was wrong uh, in retrospect. And it was just my my best attempt to to figure out uh, the way the way computers really ought to be applied to this to this task. Um, but it's 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 quite radical compared to other uh, other other things, and so uh, only time will tell on that. And, and uh, people, and when someone gets to be about um, you know about my age, they they often make a great mistake in their life, and uh, and so this might be mine, uh, 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 you know. But I didn't care. I just wanted to follow my my instinct, and you know. So if it turned out to be wrong, but I think it's uh, I think it's the right way to do it. Uh, uh, but it it takes right now it takes sort of uh, two mentalities. You have to you have to be uh, have to not only have the visual expertise of a of, of a designer, but you also have to have the uh, the the uh, a little bit of outlook of a computer programmer where you where you can think about what meta design means, what, what it means to be designing a, a a family of things instead of a single thing, and that uh, and so. It, like the uh, the most successful things come from this, um, where you have two people working together, um, and um, well, Nini as a designer uh, um, did both uh, of these very well, and so that's what it, that encourages me. And I also see the the good efforts that come out of, uh, as I said, India and uh, Japan and and uh, some people in the Netherlands and so on are are doing this. But um, I can't really say that the uh, that uh, Matthew Carter has decided to change his way of doing things. Uh, for example, Herman Herman likes this, but he's uh, uh, I don't think he's going to uh, get a PC just for that. No. Mm -hmm. So um, now the first volume it talks about is is it's really the user manual for tech itself. And and tech uh, uh, I told you about the way it does paragraphs, but it also uh, it, it, the main thing that it was designed for was to handle mathematics properly, and uh, and so I I, I uh, tried to boil down what what the best typesetters of mathematics uh, were putting in their systems, and uh, we lost it again. Okay, and so uh, so I don't know. The mathematics, of course, is uh, is one of the more difficult things to do to do printing on, and so we have this is a detail of, of, the, of the preceding. But there's uh, there's a lot to that. Then they, uh, uh, the the uh, <clears throat> one of the nice things about volume A is that I have illustrations. But I I, I, I met a wonderful cartoonist and uh, we worked together and and he's got re really delightful things for every chapter. So there's 36 il illustrations by Dwayne Bibby in each of these uh, each of these books. Um, the second volume is is uh, is quite different. This is for the people who, who are interested in implementation, and uh, so um, this is uh, is something that has turned out uh, to be uh, for computer science. It, it well, it sort of uh, in, to me, it gave the greatest satisfaction of all this project because I started out working on something that was uh, was to really be an application of computer science to uh, um, to an important uh, to, to an important part of the world. Uh, but what what it what it came back it came right back to computer science and really uh, and, and really led to a, a better way of of writing computer programs. And as I started working with this and finding that that I have typographic tools for for documenting programs, I was now able to write com write computer programs in a better way. And so it's it's, it's and I I started it's it, I've got this buzzword now called li literate programming where I. Pushing the idea that people, as they write computer programs, are also composing uh, essays, and they're writing for 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 uh, human beings to read instead of for, uh, for, uh, for for only computers to read, and 
<coughs> so this has, uh, uh, these typographic tools have made it possible to, to change the way computer programs are written in, in, in a way that they, that they become um, uh, more reliable, uh, easier to maintain, more portable, all these things that, uh, that are really at the, uh, uh, the heart of the software crisis uh, uh, are, are facilitated by having, having a program that's, that is better documented and, the, and uh, having a system um, uh, like tech that can do the, the technical typesetting uh, combined with another system that was that was easy to write in only two months, uh, was a, that, that uh, has led to a, way, a, a, a method of programming that's that's called uh, literate programming, and it's uh, it's uh, enjoying a, uh, a wave of popularity now. Uh, the first example of of literate programming is, I mean, the, the main example of it is uh, is in this in in volumes B and D of this series, which describe the program for Tech and for Metafon themselves. Now this. This computer program is uh, uh, it's certainly not the world's largest program, but it's uh, but for a program of its size, uh, it's I can, I imagine uh, it's easy to say that there are more people understand it than any other program of its size. That it's running on more different computers than on any other program of its size, and it's uh, probably more bug-free than any other program of its size. Um, and uh, uh, so this uh, is is I think it's fair to say that it, that it represents right now a, the state of the art in how to describe a computer program in a way that uh, uh, that, that that people can comprehend and uh, and uh, it's as a model for how we could develop even better systems for the future uh, for for uh, uh, ma making computer programs well understood and reliable uh, so that's the um, um, that's the content of volume B, and inside it looks like this. Uh, each uh, the, the large program is broken down into small parts, uh, individual parts. It's like 253, 254, and so on. Uh, and then um, uh, there are indexes to, to make it easy to find your way around to get from part to part. So, so for computer scientists, this is this is interesting, even if they aren't interested in typesetting, as an example of a uh, of how to. Uh, 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 document a, a program that's that's not just ivory tower uh, typical university scale uh, thing. Now, oops, this one is darker, but this shows some of volume C of of the uh, Metafont, um, uh, the manual for Metafont, and uh, a lot of people are. Is, see, Metafont was just released a few months ago for for in its PC implementation, and so we're just getting a. a First big wave of users, but it, this page shows, for example, how you can take a a, a pen and draw a tilde or, or or make some some interesting serifs in a rather easy way. Uh, volume D is like volume B in this sense. This is a this is a description of how Metafont program works inside. This is a uh, if uh, if I'm talking to computer scientists and I say you want to buy one book or the other. Uh, volume D would be the more interesting of the two because the algorithms for Metafont go into a lot of things about graphics that are that uh, where the algorithms are are quite uh, exciting and varied and also includes a, uh, a lot of things for parsing and as well as it develops its own subroutines for logarithms and everything else from scratch so that it can be com completely machine independent. So this is a, a just another example of a large uh, a large computer program that. Uh, 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 for people who are managing computer projects and so on, uh, I can recommend this as a way of as a way of doing it. Uh, the, the fifth volume is about uh, the computer modern typefaces, and this this volume just contains programs uh, for 450 different letters. And uh, the um, <coughs> uh, for example, here's the the way the lowercase a finally came out after in, in, including the uh, um, <coughs> The improvements of it. Every every page of this book uh, spread is is something something of this form. Where on the right hand page we have a program from in Metafont, and then on the left hand page we have examples of some of the letters that that program will will draw. And as I and uh, this 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 is a program for a lowercase a. It's a rather complicated program. It's one of the more difficult letters, but it drew all three of these letters, all all three of these a's, given different specifications. So here to get a typewriter style, for example. You would you uh, say that the thick and thins are equal, and you have and uh, various things. Well, but but uh, all three of these 
all three of these A's were really drawn by the same program with different specifications, and you can get, uh, you know, anything in between. Um, so those are the five, uh, the five volumes um, that came out. Uh, I think it was two years ago, and uh, so so I'm, my intent was in these books to explain everything about uh, uh, that we learned in this project. And if I couldn't explain it in in, in these books, then I figure figure that the project wouldn't uh, be wouldn't have contributed anything if it only has to be uh, in somebody's head. Um, and so I was able to celebrate uh, last fall the completion of the project by uh, uh, having a presentation in the Gutenberg Museum, where, where uh, uh, sort of, I, I, for me it was the it was the climax where I could, uh, where I could see, uh, uh, you know, you know, go to one of the one of the main uh, uh, places in the world representing printing technology and uh, and just sort of celebrate. Here. This is uh, this is Gutenberg. Uh, upside down and backward by on, by my student Scott Kim, who uh, who worked on part of the Metafont project over the years. Uh, so uh, there I was. A, so on that day I could uh, I could you know run the replica of Gutenberg's original press and uh, and uh, also uh, uh, hear some lectures by people in Germany about how they're using uh, how they're making use of that. So. There's my final slide, I guess, about the uh, you know, Stanford Archives as being a repository of all this material. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. The uh, programming language that you use there is that like is the page generated from something that could also be a file. Okay. The programming language I use is. Uh, uh, is uh, I call it web, um, uh, but it's really it's really like Pascal, and and the source that I write in is uh, is a combination of Tech and Pascal, and could you could use this with with any two uh, any two languages, one for documentation and one and one and one computer language, uh, uh, and uh, um, I have and uh, uh, the idea is that. Uh, our programmers today already know a language for documentation and a language for, um, uh, and, you know, and, and their programming language, and so they just have to learn another, an, another little bit of overlay as to as, uh, for this system that mixes the two, the, the two together. And this system that I called Web uh, does this. Then I have from this source program, I have two, um, I have two programs, one called Tangle and one called Weave. The, 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 the one called Tangle takes my source and produces a syntactically correct. Pascal program that, that that I can run. The one called Weave takes it and produces a syntactically correct tech program that I can run and get and get the book printed. And so uh, and so I use the same. And this source that I have uh, is has uh, my my comments in in tech and my and my coding in in Pascal. But it's it's a little higher level in Pascal be, uh, because it has this modular structure built in. So. Uh, well, I could go on and on about that, but it's a, it, it allows me to present my program in the order in which I think of it and want, want to explain it instead of the way a com the computer wants to read it. Um, but I have this just this one source file, and the and many people are working to develop this now to uh, programming environments so that they can so that the debuggers will know about this this high level language that that, I'm, that, that we're using. But it turns out to be a uh, um, a faster way, actually, to I, I can now write uh, a, a, a program just for my own amusement, um, faster with good documentation than if I just scratch it off in the old way. Uh, uh, so, so uh, that's why I say it's changed my own way of of, of, uh, of programming. So it came right back into the heart of computer science to uh, to help uh, uh, to help computer people, even though I started out. Not expecting any any such development at all. So my my um, one thing I m forgot to mention about tech is that I that I, I want it to be an extremely stable system, something that that won't be changing from year to year, and um, uh, and and as, as bug free as possible, so that people can use it as a, as a, a fixed point on which they can build. They can put front ends to tech and back ends uh, from tech, so that you could. 
Um, I think uh, I think I can be fairly definite that uh, uh, if someone now has a has a um, uh, a book uh, that's been composed with tech and he keeps his source files, he would be able to to use the same program 20 years from now, 50 years from now, and and get the same uh, identical output if he wanted to. So that so any archival project where something is going on for, for years and years or where you want want to where you anticipate putting out a second edition of, of something in in some in some years time uh, you can make use of the fact that tech is is uh, is going to be uh, uh, the the main engine of it is going to remain the way it, the way it is now I'm, I'm no longer funded for this project I'm working on something else and uh, and uh, you, you know any any you can always get you can always improve any large system and make it better, but there comes a point where it's much better to leave it uh, uh, to leave it uh, firm and reliable. So.